We spent the week, basically, trying to sort out things we don't know about. You are talking, I'm sure, every day to experts in South Africa. What did you hear today from South Africa about what's going on? Well, they're getting more and more information in two fronts. One is what the profile of people who are getting infected. In other words, we're trying to find out if there's any degree or not of protection, whether or not you're unvaccinated versus vaccinated versus having been previously effect infected. So that's going to be very relevant because the ultimate question that's going to be important for us here in the United States is if you have been vaccinated and boosted, given the mutations that this new variant has, what is the chance of protection against infection and if not infection, against severe disease leading to hospitalization. So we're learning about the severity of the infection and the profile of the people who are getting infected. As you well know, we are starting to see cases literally, you know, every few hours to a day or two in the United States. And as we approach the weekend, we're going to probably see more and more because once it is here, uh, there's no way that you're not going to see more and more cases. The real question is, in the fact that we have a background of Delta variant, which is very dominant and has essentially pushed all the other variants off the board, where is Omicron going to be in relationship to Delta? Will it take off and become the dominant variant? Or will it essentially get a bit smothered by Delta, the way all the other variants? The only way we're going to know that is to wait and see. And that's exactly what we're doing. But we are getting important information from our colleagues in South Africa. Well, I have a Zoom call with them tomorrow morning, so we should get another update in the morning. So let me ask one question specifically about South Africa. There's some information coming out of South Africa that the number of cases is going up, which is not a surprise. The number of hospitalizations, I believe, is not going up, certainly as dramatically. Should we read anything into that, or is it possible that's just a matter of a delay, a lag, as it were? I think the latter. Uh, in order to get a feel for the relationship between infection, a high degree of symptomatology, hospitalization, and ultimately death, you've got to have a lot of patients get infected, and you've got to follow them for at least several weeks. So although it is encouraging that they're not seeing any concerning signal, like all of a sudden a lot more hospitalizations, that is comforting, but it isn't definitive. We really need to wait until a lot more people are recognized and identified who get infected to be able to make any determination about the degree of severity. Dr. Fauci, if we go all the way back to Monday, a whole five days ago now, when we saw you with President Biden, what do we know differently from what we knew then about this Omicron? Well, we know that it's here in the United States, <laughs> which I actually, you know, not wasn't anything brilliant on my part, but we predicted that when you see it spreading throughout countries in Europe and Asia, obviously you're going to see it here in the United States. The real big question that we don't know now is what I mentioned just a moment ago, is how is it going to fare in a world, and the world being our country, in a world in which Delta is the dominant variant. That's going to be a very interesting situation to watch. All the way back on Monday, you said, as you suggest, you know, it's going to come to the United States. You were right. Let me ask you a different question. Community spread. Is it inevitable at this point? Do we already have community spread in this country? Because that may affect questions of travel restrictions, right? We absolutely have community spread in this country. We have community spread with the New York, Minnesota case, where someone who was in Minnesota, went to a conference in New York, got infected, and people with whom he had contact with also got infected. We don't know how many of them, but there's no doubt that there's community spread. So, uh, Dr. 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 Fauci, what is the timeline on finding out the clinical effects of this? Because when we talked to people on Monday, they said about a month, we should have a better sense of the clinical effect, how severe it is, how contagious it is. Uh, is that still holding? Because I saw some yeah. reports that maybe it's going to take longer. No, I think you're going to get an inkling of it within a period of three weeks to a month. And you're going to get a very good determination of it a little bit longer. But you can sort of get a hint of what's going to be coming out 
in about three weeks or so. Uh, talk about uh, treatments, because we have a couple of treatments, one from Merck, one from Pfizer, that once somebody, as I understand, has the disease in the early stage, at least you could take a pill, as it were. When will we have approvals, do you expect, of those therapeutics? Well, the FDA has given an emergency use authorization uh, to the uh, oral medication from Merck, the malnupivirir. The Pfizer one is being submitted uh, for consideration for an emergency author use authorization. It's going to be a combination of getting authorized, but also making enough product to have an impact. And that's the other important issue, is what is the scalability of these medications? And a further question is, uh, what is their likely efficacy with respect to Omicron? I talked to Dr. Anthony, uh, Albert Borla earlier in the week. You know him well. And he said he thought because of the mechanism that involves proteases, I understand, they use in the Pfizer, that he was reasonably confident it would be effective against Omicron. Does that make sense? Yes, what Albert says does make sense, because if you look at where the mutations and the amino acid substitutions are located on the spike protein, uh, particularly around the receptor binding domain and other parts of the spike protein, it does not have an impact, at least from a molecular standpoint, on the protease enzyme of this particular virus. So if you want to use a protease inhibitor, at least from a molecular mutational standpoint, it looks like that part of the molecule was spared. So you never know until you test it, but I think what Dr. With, uh, Albert Borla was saying does have some merit. So, Dr. Fauci, let's turn now to what our possible defenses are here. You said getting vaccinated, getting boosted is number one defense. But obviously testing and sort of having intelligence, as it were, about where this disease is, is terribly helpful. We heard just today, actually, that President Biden was tested, I guess, three times for COVID because he had what he called a frog in his throat. What are we doing on testing? And are these rapid tests really that accurate? Well, the rapid tests are fundamentally antigen tests. They are not as sensitive as the PCR tests. But if you do them frequently enough, the lack of sensitivity or relative sensitivity is really overcome by the fact that you ultimately will get it, get it being make a diagnosis if you test enough, more than just once. And that's the reason why when you talk about doing it, you want to do it, you know, not only maybe a couple of days in a row, but a day, every other day, something like that. But they are very, very useful, because even though they aren't um, as distinctly sensitive as the PCR, their ready availability, their ability to quickly get an answer and to do it very often because of the quantity of them, that makes up for the relative lack of sensitivity. I'm sure no test is 100% effective. Uh, there's always some margin for error, if I can put it that way, in a test. If you can compare PCR on the one hand with the antigen on the other, what is the difference? What's the degree of difference in the two? And is there a bias toward false positive or false negative? Uh, when you have a less sensitive test, the likelihood of there being a false negative is there, much more so than PCR. PCR is highly sensitive. Sometimes that sensitivity can give you a false positive. But most of the time, the sensitivity and the specificity are very good for the PCR. The rapidity with which you could do the antigen is a great advantage. But because it is not as sensitive, you could get what was called a false negative. Namely, it's there, but it's in low enough concentration that the antigen test does not pick it up. That would be considered a false negative. Uh, Dr. Fauci, uh, you have said repeatedly the best defense is to get vaccinated, and if you've been vaccinated, then get boosters. But let's talk about a segment of the population that cannot get vaccinated right now, and that is the under five, because I'm hearing from a lot of parents, I suspect you are as well, a real eagerness to have that possibility. Where are we? Well, we've done the tests, and in the process of testing kids from five to two years old and from six months up to two years. 
Those tests are ongoing right now. We likely will get an answer in the sense of getting enough data to evaluate it by the first quarter of 2022. When the FDA approves that, I can't say because I don't want to get ahead of the FDA. But when you're dealing with children that young, there's always an extra degree of care and sensitivity to the vulnerability of children. So we'll have enough data by the beginning of the year. I can't guarantee you when a, a, a emergency use authorization will be given. Uh, Dr. Fauci, we heard President Biden earlier this week say he does not have any prospects right now of shutting down the country entirely or in parts. We've seen that in parts of, for example, Germany recently and in Austria before that. Is that for medical and public health reasons or is that political? I mean, do you still have the same tools in your toolkit today that you did a year ago? Because even if you order a shutdown, are you confident people would comply with it? Well, we have a lot more tools in our toolkit today than we had a year ago, that's for sure, the most important of which was a vaccine. So, uh, I mean, that, that goes without saying. No, I, I agree with the president that I don't see anything right now that would imminently demand a lockdown of the country. We have to see what goes on with Omicron, but we also need to do a bit better with Delta. I would like to see a large proportion of that 60 million people, adults, who are eligible for vaccination who have not yet gotten vaccinated. Uh, that, I think, is a very important issue that we need to address. And we see events, even here in New York City, we had this uh, anime uh, convention that appears to be the source of one case of Omicron. Have we gotten a little bit jaded? Have we gotten a little bit lax with respect to some of these events that could be super spreaders, not containing them sufficiently? Well, I don't know what the circumstances of that event was. I understood that you had to be proof of vaccinated to get into that. Yeah, I, but I don't know. I don't know enough about it really to comment on it. Okay, Dr. Fauci, from your point of view, besides vaccination, between besides boosters, what should we be doing to keep ourselves safer? I think just be prudent in our activities. I think the most important for a vaccine, first of all, for an unvaccinated person, please get vaccinated. For a vaccinated person, when your time comes up, please get a boost. A boost dramatically increases the level of protection. For a vaccinated, boosted person and everybody else, when you are in an indoor congregate setting, keep your mask on because you do not know what the status of vaccination and or infection is for those who are in that congregate setting with you. That is being prudent. Be careful when you travel, wear your mask indoors, <clears throat> try as best as possible to stay away from very crowded, poorly ventilated places. Those are just common sense things that you could do. Last question, Dr. Fauci. Very timely and very specific, certainly here in New York City, I suspect elsewhere. Should we be canceling our Christmas parties? Because there are various reports right now of holiday parties being canceled. Well, it really depends on the circumstance. If you're in a situation where you have people that you know are vaccinated, you could make vaccination or proof of vaccination a condition of going to the party. I don't think you can say blanket that you should cancel Christmas parties. I, I wouldn't say that at all. 